Good evening everyone, or at least it's evening right now as I'm recording this. We're here in Sweden. Today we're gonna do another playthrough of The Fields of Normandy, which is a book game uh, which you can buy on Amazon. You can find the link in the description of this video. Before we start playing, uh, I hope that you watched my previous videos on Mission 1 and Mission 2. This is gonna be Mission 3. I just want to point out that Mike, uh, the designer of this game, was nice enough to uh, watch those videos and give me a comment. And one error I did in my last video was I actually moved uh, backwards uh, in this way and you can, can actually not do that. You can only move forwards. You can never move backwards with your troops. Uh, I also forgot about the flanking bonus, uh, meaning that if you are outside of the enemy arc, a fire arc and you're adjacent to them and fire at them, you uh, get a uh, one uh, die roll modifier bonus. Uh, one small more thing, if you roll 2d6 for orders and you want to re-roll them because they're double, you cannot keep one and roll the other, you have to re-roll both of them. I had uh, misunderstood the rules about that. Okay, so today we're gonna play mission 3 secure the building uh, The building in this mission could be a problem, but there are useful hills right next to it One of which is wooded and attracts bonuses for both attack and defense This would be even more useful if it was in the German units flank German units in a building act in the same way as the other German units when discovered They will face the unit that found them and their fire zone works in the same way this mission also introduces German rifle squads, which are a little bit easier to deal with uh, than the light machine guns and heavy machine guns that you have faced so far. So this is the situation. We're going to spawn down here. We're going to have Germans here in the woods, in the building and in a normal terrain. And we need to take them out in six turns. Now my general uh, idea is I'm going to use, I have three rifle squads. Uh, rifle squad A, B and C which are equipped with rifle and grenades. I kind of have a plan that I might want to go up here with one of them uh, to draw these guys fire, make them reveal themselves and also um, use the other two to get up here on their flank. Uh, because I think in six turns and three enemies I'm not gonna have the time to scout them all out. I'm gonna have to sacrifice at least one unit. Anyway, we will see what happens. We're gonna go ahead and roll now for the first uh, first squad. And I roll four and two. So with four and two, I can advance and scout or fire and cover. So I believe I'm gonna advance and scout them. So this guy moves up here and then he's gonna go ahead and scout this unit, uh, this German unit. So we're gonna go ahead and roll to see what kind of enemy this is gonna be. And we roll a 6, so we get that new kind of unit, which is a German rifle squad. That's perfect, because they're not um, not so dangerous. So the fire arc of the rifle squad is going to be the, the arc that he's facing. So it's going to be this, this, and this. So it's going to be easy to flank him. Alright, so we have uh, the next squad member. We roll 6 and 3, which is advance and fire, and advance and cover so it doesn't really matter which one we use because we're not going to be able to fire yet if we were to move right in here we could fire but then we would also take fire next turn and, and, and i want to avoid that so i think i'm going to take the safe way um, to the left there and we're off for the last one we have advance and scout and rally and grenade so we're going to go ahead and use the two which is advance and scout and um, I'm gonna go ahead and just move him up here so the scouting is wasted. Alright, that's the end of my turn. The Germans will not fire this turn as they are not within range of any of my units. So we go now to the next turn. I start by rolling for rifle squad B and C which are over here on the left. And the left one will start with him. We roll 4 and 5. Advance and... F no, sorry, that's 6. Fire and cover, fire and advance. So we'll use fire and advance, which is number five. So <clears throat> unfortunately the firing is wasted, but we do advance. And then we'll roll for the next chap. 
And this time we roll two and three. Uh, advance and scout, advance and cover. So we will use advance and scout. And then we're gonna scout the building, which is exactly two hexes away. And we have another rifle squad there. So we decide the facing. And I think, let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna make him face down. So he's gonna face down here. And um, that means his fire arc is gonna be these three uh, hexes. Okay, and then it's our last guy. In here rolls one and three. Rally and grenade and advance and cover. So he's gonna go ahead and move up here. And then he's gonna use cover. And now there is gonna be an automatic spawn uh, of an enemy since we moved adjacent to a question mark. And let's see here, that's gonna be a one, so that is gonna be a heavy machine gun. And it's gonna point towards the unit which discovered it. So we put an infantryman with a little machine gun here. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and put a, a, one of these orange cubes to note that it's a heavy machine gun. So this time we now, uh, it's, we finished our turn. This time it's gonna be, um, the Germans are gonna fire at us since this guy is within range. Remember this guy's fire arc is here. So even if he's in range, he cannot fire at my units which are flanking him. All right, so the German will hit on five or higher. However, I have cover from, um, from the cover I made, so he will need to roll a six or higher. And let's see. The German only rolls four, so it was very lucky for my soldier there in squadron A. He has survived the attack. Uh, okay, and that is the end of the turn, so it's now a new turn. We're gonna start with this guy this time. Whoops. Four and three. Four is fire and cover. Three is advance and cover. So we're gonna use the four. We are gonna go ahead and fire and we will fire at the heavy machine gun. We need uh, to hit him. We need an eight or higher. And we're all ten. Perfect. So this guy has been taken out. We have cleared the only heavy machine gun and we also have the right now to add a cover, although that's kind of pointless since the enemy cannot advance and fire at me. Okay, so we have rifle squadrons B and C left. And we're all nine. Oh, sorry, six and three. Uh, <clears throat> so we're gonna use six, which is advance and cover. So this guy is advancing. Then he's firing upon uh, this squadron. I need eight to hit, although this guy is hiding in the woods, so that eight is gonna turn into a nine, but luckily I'm flanking, so that nine turns into an eight again, and then because I have fire support from here, the, it's gonna turn into a seven. So I need a seven or higher to destroy that German unit. And I roll eight, so I've successfully managed to take out this last German soldier. Uh, sorry, not the last. We have one more remaining. And we have a squadron here, which we need to roll actions for. And we roll five and four. Five is fire and advance, four is fire and cover. We're gonna use fire and advance, and we're gonna advance into this area here. And we're not, um, we're not gonna go, uh, go ahead and walk into the forest. And that is the end of our turn. The Germans cannot fire, so we go now to turn four. We start with rolling for this guy. We roll two and six. Six is advance and fire. So we go ahead and advance. <clears throat> this guy is in a building now. And it's gonna be, we'll remove these covers. So since he's in the building, he gets a plus two defense and I'm also in his arc of fire. So I am not uh, effectively flanking him. So instead of an eight, I'm gonna need a 10 or higher to actually take him out. And I roll a 7, so that's not good enough. I don't manage to take him out. Okay, we go to the next squadron. And we roll 
what's that? Two and six, okay. So we're gonna use the six, which is, which is advanced and fire. So we are advancing uh, to this area. And um, we are gonna fire now. And instead of a 10, we actually only need an eight. Uh, minus one, because we're flanking. And minus one, because we have fire support. So let me see if I get this right. I need an eight. Uh, base stats to take this guy out but because he's in a building he gets a plus two defense so that's gonna become a 10 but then because I have fire support and I'm flanking I'm outside of his fire arc it's a minus two so it becomes an eight again so yes I need an eight or higher to effectively take out this German infantry squad yeah, I'm gonna re-roll that I don't know if you can see it but it's standing like this so we're gonna re-roll it and we get a 9. Okay, so this guy is effectively taken out. Wow, that was a quick victory. Uh, I only went to turn 4 out of 6 turns. So I think my rifle squads did very good. Uh, I think my plan was pretty good. Uh, that I didn't chicken out and just went left side with all of them. But I was lucky. I got the scouts when I needed them. And I got the proper attacks when I needed them as well. As always guys, thank you very much for watching. Again, uh, check the description where you can get this game. Um, mission 6 and forwards. I think that is when it starts to introduce piats and mortars and whatnot. So things are going to get a little bit more exciting. Uh, I am going to keep doing these missions. So stay tuned. Tomorrow I'm going to do mission 4. Which is, um, I'm not sure if it's woods or a secure another building. Perhaps it's the church mission. We'll see you tomorrow guys. Again, thank you very much for watching. See you next time.